What's going on, everybody? It's Afro Think Tank. Uh, I had a, um, I had a thought, uh, and my thought is that I think it's about time for us Afri uh, Africans in the diaspora to start petitioning for citizenship in West African countries. At West African countries, and I think uh, the reason why we need to do this is because we are at a point in time now where the communications have been the communications has been getting better between uh i would say our group of people meaning when i say our group of people i mean africans on continent and africans outside of continent now african americans afro caribbeans and afro latinos what makes us so unique is that we never gave up our citizenship we never gave up our land we never gave up anything we were taken what makes us unique from other immigrants or whatnot. So now that we are becoming woke, conscious, and fully aware of the crime that was committed on our people, that um, it's time for us to petition for these African countries to give us citizenship. And this is why I say that. Say this. You know, um, I saw Bre uh, Brexit, right? Um, if you have a follower page, um, um, Bre Brexit, I mean, Blacksit, sorry, Blacksit. Um, this lady from the UK, uh, um, heritage by way of Ghana. I mean, not Ghana, but uh, I think Jamaica. I think she was from, and but her ancestry is Gambia. You know, so she represents full circle, the full, the full circle of of slavery, um, that uh, chattel slavery, transatlantic slave trade. Her people were taken from Namibia. I mean, sorry, not Namibia, but uh, the Gambia or Gambia to the Caribbean, and from the Caribbean, she made her way to the UK. Um, probably had something to do with reconstruction of the uh of europe which a lot of jamaicans were um asked to come over and rebuild and they were treated like crap afterwards all right so she represents the full spectrum of the african for the most part the african diaspora outside of africa and she very very clearly um articulated why it is that we should be given um citizenship in west african countries if west african countries are going to be serious like ghana about repatriating its its people because we are west africans people we are their people so just like the petition the uk and america to get back their stolen their stolen um items that were stolen by the uk your stolen um oba heads and and bronze statues and and all these um these relics that were stolen from from them it's just as they are petitioning for that to happen they should also be petitioning and setting up uh, something to get back their stolen people. Because the way I see it, what's more important? The stolen the stolen bronze statues and wooden carved statues or the stolen people? Which one's more important to the health of West Africa? Which, more, which one's more important to the pride of these West, Afri uh, West African countries and kingdoms? Okay, so they should be setting up a system where they welcome us back fully fully in america as you can see we've been fighting this whole time you can clearly see what we've been going through this whole time no matter where we are in this world when we're in the western world we have been fighting we have been on the offensive we have been at war this entire time we have never been at peace and every time every time we've tried to be at peace what happens they come and they mess it up they don't want us to have peace okay so the only place we can find peace is west africa our home right as well as we are the only immigrant community that do that does not have a proper connection with its root. You see the Ch the Chinese; they can come to America, they can come to the Caribbean because they're backed by the Chinese government. They have economic power, social power. They got networks. So if you have all of that, you can go to any place around the world and you can establish yourself because you have you have that that backbone. You have that connection. You can go back. You have resources to to pull from. And when you're being challenged by another institution, if you have your own institution, you're able to challenge another institution because you have your own. You have backup. African-Americans, Caribbeans, we don't have that because we've been it was cut. It was severed the root. And I think that sometimes we forget that we are simply a branch of the main root. Everything we do, all the fruit we bear, it comes from the source. But for a very long time. These branches, African Americans, the Caribbeans, or the Brazilians, or the the um, Afro Arabs, we've been we've been growing our own branches by ourselves. 
All right, we've been doing the best we can to bear fruit on these branches. They, these branches done got thick. They do produce fruit, but we can it, we can do better by reconnecting ourselves with the root, which is Africa. Okay, and at the same time, the branches provide nourishment to the root. All right, as the branches go out, they bring they bring in nutrients, they bring in vitamins, they bring in health to the root, so that the root itself can be stable and strong in the ground. Right. So Africa being the root and the diaspora being the branches, it's time for us to connect so that we can feed off one another. America has over one point. African Americans have over one point five something trillion purchasing power. That means we have one point five something trillion dollars in our bank accounts. We're ready to spend. We're ready to build businesses. We're ready to come over there and we're ready to, to rebuild these countries because they're our countries. We have the same claim as to Africa as you do living on the continent and no one can take that from us okay despite you know petty um local squabbles of this and that all you know the little pettiness that we have you know on both sides but despite that on on the, on the grand scheme of things as an african-american as an african who lives in america and i speak for all africans when i say this whether they know it or not we have just as much rights in the land of africa as the people in africa that is our home too so we should be given an opportunity to come home as citizens, right? The Jews do it. Israel does it. If you're Israeli, okay, if you're Jewish, whatever you want, you know, whatever, if that's your religion, you can go there. That country, company, that country will take care of you. They'll give you a place to live. They'll give you money. They'll find you a job. They'll give you citizenship. You can have dual citizenship. They take care of you. Why can't West Africans do the same thing? From, from, from Senegal all the way down in Namibia, the whole West Africa should be welcoming us. And even if, even if they're not, you know, even if they're not thinking on the means of, oh, let's bring more black people to the country because they already have problems with other black people because of tribalism and other things like that, which we need to get over with. But even, even if you're thinking that way, think economically. Why would you not want to infuse $1.5 trillion of African-American money into your economies? Why would you not want to bring the African-American, um, technical know-how and skills and the Caribbean know-how and skills in the Afro-Caribbean skills and know-how and industries and that you need in your countries to develop so you can be like the West. I mean, think about it. The African diaspora, our, our blood, sweat and tears and our know-how created the West. All the riches of the West, all the riches of the UK, all the riches of, of Europe, of, 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 uh, all the countries we like to flee to out of Africa. All these countries were built off the backs of black people, off the sweat of black people, off the actual backs of black people. The 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 English the, the British what the with the Queen? All her gold, that's African gold. Or Indian gold. I mean, literally their entire empire, their entire come up has been off the of backs of us. It's time for us to come up ourselves. It's time for us to do it ourselves. So, you know, like the UK, they they got eighty over 800 billion dollars of purchase power you telling me you don't want that you know you see what ghana's doing look at that they have a whole campaign look at ghana now they're developing like this look at look at um ethiopia even ethiopia getting a piece of it all right they're developing like this why because they know how to grab that dollar they know how to grab that dollar get that if anything let's come together as an economic power block bring all that american money all that American money, that's really African money. You're just taking back what it is that's yours anyway. We are yours. The money's yours. The artifacts are yours. Come get it. So I think it's time for us serious, us serious African Americans, the ones who want to integrate back into Africa. We don't want to bring Western style culture there. We don't want to bring that. We want to bring ourselves. We want to learn. We don't want to hurt or abuse the local community. We don't want to do that because it's been done to us. It's been done to you. It's been done to us. We want to do things differently. And if the Chinese can come in there and ex exploit the people, as you can see, as the Europeans who come in there and they exploit the people, as you can see, you know, you allow that. That that's allowed to happen. Right. Your governments allow that. Right. So why wouldn't the governments want to allow African-Americans, their own people who have the money, the knowledge, and they know the mindset of these Europeans and these Asians because we live amongst them. So we know how they operate. We're not naive to the way they do business and we know how to do business the same way they do. But at the same time, we have compassionate, we have our compassion and we have our humanity and we know how not to take dog. I just want to interrupt my interrupt everything I got going on here. 
Whenever you're ready. Whenever you're done. Doing a video here. You done? Huh? You done? I don't know if she's done or not. But anyway, so I just um I just think that um after seeing Black um Black Sit do her video and a few others, I think it was about time for me to make a video to also petition the West African governments to to start a petition to start uh, the African Union as well. Come on, the African Union, you guys need to get yourselves together. For real. You guys are supposed to be the biggest organization representing us as black as Africans in this in, in this world. And you guys, we need new leadership. We need new leadership, fresh leadership that have fresh ideas and that know how to operate in this in this brand new modern world. Okay. So, but yes, I'm formally uh, petitioning that, um, and I'm putting out there that we need, you know, West Africans to give us the opportunity to become citizens automatically, or at least give us a path to citizenship. Because if we're gonna bring out money, if we're gonna take the risk, if we're gonna take the risk to come over there to uproot ourselves from what we know, even though. We, you know, and we're not talking about all African Americans. Not all African Americans are going to come. All right. Not all Afro Caribbeans are going to come. You're only going to get the best of us. Only the best of us with the best intentions are going to come there. You don't have to worry about the stereotypical thugs or the stereotypical bad actors or the, or the worst part of us that you see in the African American or Afro Caribbean community. You don't have to worry about that. Those people are happy where they are and they're not going anywhere. You're going to get the best. That the, di the African diaspora has to offer you. You're going to get the money infused in your economy. You're going to get the, the know-how. You're going to get the, the, the business savvy people to connect with your people who also have the know-how that just need financing. There's a lot of Africans in West Africa that know how to do all of this stuff. That's, well, that's smarter than anybody over here. But they just don't have the finances or the capability of getting their businesses off the ground because of the situation on the ground. And it'll be a person like me or who... Who has enough money to back that person and that sees that vision that wants to see that person thrive who will finance that person so if y'all want that to happen that is something that needs to happen so please uh people just spread this out spread this go to uh go to black sit go to her go to her page she had a press conference in, in um the gambia her and her husband and a few others where they where they expressed the the need for africans to be given uh citizenship on arrival you know, some sort of mechanism. It can be done. Don't say it can't be done. Go check out her video. And it was passionate. It was strong. It, it, it I'm not gonna lie. She, you know, at the end when she broke down, it brought to it, it brought tears to my eyes too because I felt that. I felt that. You know. And if you can't feel the love coming out of her voice, you can't feel the love coming out of the things that Black Sid is saying. I don't know what's wrong with you. There's something wrong. You're not connected. You're not connected to 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 any of this. Okay. So go check that out. Please share this video. Share it. Share it with all your African friends. Share it with your Af your Afro Caribbean friends. Hopefully, other people start making videos. Let this let this be known. It's the age of information. It don't cost that money much money to get a message out now. You know, pass it to somebody that's important. Let it, let it start trending. Let us reconnect. Let's put this puzzle together. So that's all I wanted to say um, for now. This has been Afro Think Tank. Learn something, teach something. I'm out. Peace.